Hi students, I am Chakravarti, the director of Chakravarti e-classroom. In this session, you are going to learn some basics of prepositions, which are very much helpful and useful for you to crack English section, many questions in English section in various competitive exams conducted in our country. But before going for the actual session, students, I would like to share a few uh, things about uh, our institute. We offer video classes for various competitive exams, like bank exams conducted by IBPS, IBPS PO, clerk, specialist officer, then all levels of IBPS RRBs, then SBI PO, clerk and specialist officer, then RBA grade B officer and assistants, then NAWAD grade A and assistants, then all insurance exams including LIC, AAOs and assistants, then UPSC, CSAT exam, civil services aptitude test, then various campus recruitment tests. And we offer these courses in three modes students, one is online, next pen drive and SD card mode. So those students who have proper internet connectivity, you can choose online. If not, you can go for pen drive or a SD card. Different validity periods, like we have a three month course. The validity is three months, then six month course, then 12 month course, one and a half year and a two years. You can choose one among these as per your choice. Our unique thing of our institute is, we dealt with the, uh, all the chapters from the basic level because nowadays in competitive exams they are asking for speed and uh, accuracy by giving very critical questions. To crack those critical questions thereby to maintain this accuracy you need to learn the concept from the basic level. For that reason we focused on the basics and we named it as a concept building sessions. Conceptual clarity must be there. Once you get basics and practice well, automatically you can get the speed. And uh, our success rate is very high students. Every year, more than 3,500 to 4,000 students are securing government jobs across the country. So thousands of my students are working in various banks and uh, uh, central government, different different central government departments in our country. And the fee also we have kept uh, very less. You please visit our website uh, www.chakravartisar.com and uh, sign up yourself to create a trial account for you. In your trial account you can watch uh, some free videos from our courses. And to watch some more free videos, you can visit our YouTube channel by name Chakravarti Sir, so that you can understand the methodology how we teach. By the way students, we have now more than 15,000 students across the country, seriously preparing for various competitive exams. And the content of our course is as of now, more than 330 hours of video classes, 6,500 pages of study material, then chapter wise test and finally mock test. Not only these videos, but we are going to add many videos every week, mostly twice in a week or thrice in a week. You are going to get new videos according to the latest pattern so that all the students are equipped with the new pattern questions. A student even you start from the basic level also within a reasonable time I am telling you within one year time you will be definitely getting a government job. I wish you all the best students. Please visit our website for further details. This lesson prepositions lesson number one has been taken from our courses only. I have uploaded this one on YouTube to make all the other students, those who have not joined our institute yet, to understand the teaching methodology, how we teach, how much depth we are going. All right. So in reasoning, we have discussed total 24 chapters from the basic level, quant 22 chapters, English 16 chapters. 
Please go through this lesson completely and try to get benefit out of this one. You can have the basic information of our fee structure on the screen now. I wish you all the best students. Now the class starts. Hi students. Now let's start a new session today uh, in English on prepositions. See students, prepositions is also very very important chapter for you as far as the competitive exams are concerned. You take any competitive exam right from bank exams to from bank clerical to the topmost exam in our country everywhere there are questions from preposition in one way i can say directly or indirectly in every competitive exam where english is part of that one you will get a bunch of questions from preposition and for that matter in english language preposition plays a vital role in most of the cases without a preposition or without some prepositions you won't make a meaningful sentence of course, there is an exception for that. In some sentences, we need not use prepositions also. We can omit that one. We will, uh, like, uh, I'll explain you one by one. But basically, without a preposition, there won't be any meaning for one sentence. Alright. So, such an important role prepositions play in English language. Not only in English language, but you take uh, any language in the world, Without prepositions, you won't construct or make a meaningful sentence, either spoken or written. So, we are going to discuss the topic students and uh, as usual, we start from the basic level. In every uh, like uh, subject, whether it is reasoning, quant or English, we have to learn from the basics. Because in the examinations, the two competitive exam, you need to maintain speed and uh, accuracy. To maintain accuracy, you need uh, basics. Without that, you won't make a, uh, you won't uh, maintain accuracy. If you get accuracy, automatically you will get speed. That is the reason why we learn this concept from the basic level and slowly we will move on to basic to moderate, moderate to advanced. First, let us finish off the concept. Then we will go for the application of this concept. How to apply this one? Then finally, we will discuss those questions uh, which generally they ask in various competitive exams. Because there is a slight difference between the questions uh, asked in competitive and uh, uh, academic exams. Academic exams, that stream is little different from competitive exams. Here in competitive exams, uh, you have to run with time. So here, along with the basics, you need to learn some tricks also to solve the question within the stipulated time. We are going to give that one. See students, as it is, we go like this. First, basics. Then slowly, moderate, advanced. Topic will be meant that uh, concept will be completed. Then we learn the application part. Then we will go for competitive examination form. Alright, now let's start this one. See students, before starting this, uh, what do you mean by preposition? If you bifurcate that word preposition, that is pre-position. Okay, so preposition, you just bifurcate this one as preposition. Pre is before something, you know this one, right? So preposition is a word which is kept generally before, before something in a sentence. Just we will learn the concept from the basic level, right? Don't go by bookish language. Simply, preposition is a word or prepositions words which is or which are placed before some words. Those words are generally nouns and pronouns. So, preposition is a word or word phrases generally kept before a noun or a pronoun. The job of, the role of preposition in a sentence is to show the relationship between noun and pronoun with something else, other parts of the sentence to make it meaningful. This is the simplest way of defining prepositions. Don't go by, as I told you just now, bookish way, right? Simple one, preposition is a word which is generally kept 
before a noun or pronoun to show the relationship between the noun or pronoun with the other parts of the sentence to make it meaningful. For example, I'll give you one sentence. Just take one sentence here. Uh, let us take a small sentence. The book is on the table. Simple one, right? Or just go for this one. There is a cow in the field. Simple. Or take another sentence. Nivedita. Nivedita uh, is fond of coffee. Right. Just observe these sentences, students. Here, if you see, the book is on the table. On his preposition here. Alright. So here there is a cow in the field. That's one. Now Nivedita is fond of, of, of coffee. Now you see here this word, this word on is placed before table. Placed before table. Table is a noun. Now this is connecting this table and a book. You should take out this one for example. If we take it out, the book is the table. There is no sense in that one. There is no meaning for the state sentence or statement. If you keep this on, it is connecting book and table. Here this proposed preposition is connecting these two. The book is on the table. Where is the book? This is in accusative state. I'll tell you later. But now the book is on the table. On his preposition. Now similarly, there is a cow in the field. If you take out this in, there is a cow in the field. There is no meaning for the sentence. So this is connecting these two words, cow in the field. Similarly, Nivedita is fond of coffee. Of is the preposition. Right? Take another one. For example, the cat jumped. Jumped off the chair. Simple. Now here the cat is jumped off the chair. This is preposition. Now here off is the preposition. Have you got the idea? Right? This is the basic idea. Basic one. Basic level understanding of a prepositions. Got the idea? Now slowly we will learn how many types of prepositions are there. How to use that one with the words, noun or pronoun. Sometimes we can use this one with the verb also, right? One by one. One by one we will go for that. And there are some exceptions also. Sometimes what happens? Generally the preposition is before a noun or pronoun. But sometimes uh, it can be after that also. At the end of the sentence also we can use uh, or we can place a uh, preposition. Sometimes we can completely omit the preposition also. Without preposition also we can have meaning for a sentence. We will learn that one. All those are exceptions. But basically this is the idea of a preposition. Now always remember students. For example here the cow is in the field. Now here, this field is a noun. So this in preposition is connecting, showing the relationship between cow and field. Means it is connecting two nouns here, cow and field. Now here, this field is known as object of the preposition. Preposition is in. Field is the noun. Right? Now, this field is governed by, governed by the preposition in. That is the reason why we call this one as a object of the preposition. Got the idea? Right? Basic level understanding of preposition. Now, let's have some more examples, students. Uh, let's take the pen is in, 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 in the ink pot. The pen is in the ink pot. It makes sense. Alright. So here this is. Uh, in is the preposition. Take another one. Uh, the sky is above us. Above is the preposition. Above us. Okay. Take another thing. He came 
with us, with, with, with us. Okay. So, why I am giving you these many examples? You will have the basic understanding of that. See here, this preposition is uh, on here. This is on, in, of, of, in, above, with. There are many types of prepositions. If you count that one, roughly I can tell you, prepositions uh, may be more than 100 prepositions in English language. If you go for the word phrases, that is uncountable. Many things, many phrases can be found there, can be made, right? For that reason, by counting everything or uh, like uh, going with some rules, uh, it is not at all possible in English language. Alright, uh, so if anybody tells you there are some rules to use preposition, they are bluffing, they are lying, right? No such rule is there. But we can categorize that one. Types of preposition we can take, we can group that one and uh, very importantly how to use that one before any noun or pronoun or sometimes verbs, uh, how to use that one. I will give you crystal clear idea. After listening to these sessions, uh, I am pretty sure that you will be in a position to do all the questions in any competitive exam with 100% uh, accuracy. And our plan of action is like this. I am going to take uh, 4 to 5 lessons based on only prepositions. The like uh, difficulty level will be as I told you in the same way. First the concept, then application, then competitive examination, nature, question. So that it will be completed. Right? Now coming back to the concept. Uh, you have seen here. Uh, just you have observed here students. Everywhere in these sentences, uh, prepositions are placed uh, before noun or uh, pronoun. But sometimes in exceptional cases, what is there? You can use prepositions uh, after that one also. Almost at the end of the sentence also, we can use uh, prepositions. For example, let us take one example. Uh, you ask your brother to bring a laptop for you. Alright, uh, he bought a laptop for you, for example. Then... He is saying this one to you. This is, this is the laptop you are, you are asking for or you have asked for or you asked for. Simple past tense. You asked for. Now you see, here, this is the laptop you asked for. In this case, what happened? The preposition for is kept at the end of the sentence. This is not before a noun or pronoun in this sentence. Even it is kept at the end of the sentence also. This sentence makes sense. There is a meaning for this one. Some exceptional cases you can use in this way also. We will have one more example. Suppose you sat on a chair. Okay. So, one person is asking you, uh, which of which of uh, these chairs, which of these chairs did you, did you sit on? Now you see, actually he, you sat on a chair, right? So on was a preposition. Suppose somebody asking you in this way, which of these chairs did you sit on? So here on is the preposition which is kept uh, at the end of the sentence. Even in this way also you can use. We will discuss all the things students. As I told you, you will be perfect with prepositions, using prepositions and uh, attempting the questions in competitive exams. You can do it. It will be cake swap for you after listening or after watching all these videos. Four or five lessons I am going to give on prepositions. Alright. Uh, so now, before going further, we will discuss the prepositions in a systematic way. As hundreds of prepositions are there, it is not possible to discuss that one, uh, discuss them by taking one by one. For that reason, it is wise enough to make them into groups. Basically, students, we can group in this way. Prepositions of time. Very important one, right? Then prepositions of direction. Okay? Then prepositions of place or position. Place our position, we discuss it together. Then prepositions of a cause. Okay. Then prepositions of manner. Manner. Then prepositions of amount. Amount. 
and so on and so on. There is no limit for that. Just for our purpose, I have grouped that one into six. Out of these six, uh, these three are most important for you. All right, very important prepositions are there. That does not mean that these three are not important. These are also very much important to learn. But still, still, what we will do? First, we discuss these three. Then we focus on these three as a group by taking this one into miscellaneous one. All right. Now, let us start with the, the first one, prepositions of time. And before that one, students, some students, not some students, most of the students are getting confused uh, in using prepositions. For example, just yesterday only, yesterday only one student had sent a mail to me, Sir, I am getting confused among uh, uh, jumped over or jump over, jump into, uh, jump off. I am getting confused. This type of prepositions, right? First, let me give you the clear idea of that very important one are very commonly used prepositions. What are the places you take first? Just for general understanding. Then after that, I am going to start this one. Particularly, what is time? Like prepositions of time, direction, place, position and so on. So generally, I just uh, would like to clarify that doubt. One of our uh, online students only, he sent that one to me. See, very simple here. Jumped off or jumped over, jumped into. See? Jumped over means, for example, um, let's take a small example. There is a chair, for example. There is a chair. Let's take it as chair. Okay. One cat is here. Let's take it as a cat. Cat. Right. Let's take it as a cat. Now, if this cat uh, jumps from here to here, without touching this one, jumps from here to here, this is called uh, jump over. Remember. The cat jumped over the chair. For example, the chair is like this. Okay. Now, the cat is here. The cat is here. The cat is here means it is here on this chair. And this way. Okay. If this cat jumps from here to here on the ground. Okay. So, this is called jumped off the chair. Jumped off the chair. This is a jump off. Remember, you should never forget this one, right? So from here, over this one, this is called jumped over without touching this. From this surface onto the ground, we should say this one as a jumped off. For example, there is a big bucket like this. The cat is here. The cat is here, for example. Now, this cat jumped here jumped here right from here into the tub or into the well or into some pit we call this one as a jumped into jumped into remember this one as simple as this one right this is jumped over this is jumped off this is jumped into these are the specific words all right you should never like confuse by using this one practically Right. So now, before going for the groups of this preposition, time, direction and all these things, let's discuss some places also. Very important or very commonly used places, then we will move on to that one. See students, for example, let's take the same cat. Let's take the same cat. We keep this cat in a bus, for example. We keep this cat in a bus. Uh, let us take, there is a bus. Easily you can understand this, right? This cat is in the bus here. Okay, the places I'll give you clearly, right? So most commonly used places, bus, you take the wheels here, suppose wheels. So this bus is on the road. On the road. Some places with regard to cat. Just listen to this one carefully. We may discuss the positions in this way. Just observe this one carefully. Suppose I has told you this is a bus. And uh, this is the front side of bus, for example. This is the front side of the bus, okay? So now, if this is in this way, okay. So now, this position is called uh, in, in. The cat is in the bus. In, this is. Okay, so then, for example, the front here, right? This is the front side of the bus. We call this one as uh, before or in front of in front of suppose one more cat is here 
we say that uh, this cat is in front of the bus or we can call this place as before also both are more or less same specific difference is there in the uh, like uh, further classes we will clarify this one also in front of uh, and the before suppose this place is called behind behind the bus behind okay and uh, on on means uh, on this place touching the surface okay suppose one more cat is here one more cat is here so this cat is on the bus touching the surface okay this cat is in the bus whereas uh, something coming into this one from outside to inside one cat is coming in, in, into this right uh, so this is called uh, uh, into into we have just discussed this one right uh, jumped into one cat is on the bucket on the bucket uh, when it is jumped into that one we say that one as into into okay this is called into and uh, this as i told you on some students are getting confused between on and uh, over sometimes on over and uh, upon see very simple on means touching the surface over means uh, somewhere here not touching this one right this is called uh, over what the idea right then what is upon upon means uh, one thing which is coming from outside and touching this surface here touching this surface uh, not coming in right one thing coming from outside touching the surface this is called uh, upon we will have perfect usage of all these things right just i am introducing you to the places all right so this is into in on upon over in front of or before and this is behind and under 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 means this place this is called under suppose one dog is here waiting for this cat right this dog is under the bus under the bus this one okay now still further still further in, in, inside that one right still further this is called beneath beneath got the idea this is beneath and uh, one surface is here other surface is here this is under suppose one table is there one table right this is the ground this is the table okay one cat is here we say that uh, this cat is under the table right one cat is here on the table all right uh, this place is called over this is upon under beneath these are most commonly like uh, confusing words simple uh, prepositions but some students are getting confused how to use this one everything students i'm telling you one by one we are going to discuss everything now let us start with the groups that is time time prepositions of time how to use that one let us start this now let us focus on the first category first group preposition of time very important students right in prepositions of time we discuss a very important one in okay next on at these three are very important okay in on at then followed by since also since then from this is also preposition come under prepositions of time then during then within also within what is the difference between in and within i'll tell you then followed by till or until okay so then uh, after before right these things we are going to discuss first we emphasize uh, in on and uh, at how to use and uh, when to use we'll have a crystal a crystal clear idea on that then we will move on to the remaining things all right now let us start with the uh, in on and uh, at i i just explain you all the three together students so that uh, you can never forget this one always use always use the preposition in on at uh, from general to specific general to specific means in general use you use in a little specific go for on specifically you go for at 
What is this one? Suppose when you are talking about the time. When to use in generally. General means uh, in is used for uh, years, months, decades, centuries like this. For example, in April. You should not use uh, on April. Are at April for the beginners I'm telling you all right in April my examination is in April next year for example in you have to use in uh, in 2017 the incident took place like somebody got elected as a president in 2015 in that way you have to use in for months years weeks decades centuries you have to use in as far as time is concerned we are not talking about place or position or something else you can use in to denote places also that we will discuss later then combinedly all together we will learn but as of now i am going for only prepositions on time you should use in for this purpose and uh, when to go for on a little more specific for example to denote uh, days days Yes. For example, on Monday, on Monday or on Sunday in that way. My examination is on next Monday, right? On Monday. We will go for a picnic on Tuesday. So you have to use on for that purpose. What about at? When to go for at? At is used more specifically. For example, at 6 o'clock, at 6 o'clock or at 5 o'clock or at midnight. In that sense, we have to use that one. If you know that one, more specifically, we have to use at. Now, look at these sentences, students. Just pause the video with your idea. As you have been uh, like... Uh, listening to this session or you have been watching this video for the last 20 minutes I think all right so with this one with the basic idea try to fill up the blanks here just pause the video fill it up very quickly with the preposition of time that too we have discussed only in on and at so in should be used for general things longer period of uh, time we use in Generally, right? A little specifically, if you know that they are dates, we use uh, on. Followed by at means uh, for specific time, for specific thing, we use uh, at. Right? Just go for this one. Simply, I have a meeting dash 10 o'clock. Very simple students. This is a specific time mentioned here. So, clearly, I have a meeting at 10 o'clock. Simple. Right now, his birthday is dash 25th December. Shall we go for in, on, or at here? Very simply, this is not a specific time or specific thing. So, clearly, at is ruled out. Next, in or on. In is used for more longer period. That is months, weeks, years, centuries. Decades we use uh, in longer period of time here clearly 25th December so a day is given here means the date is given there for that reason his birthday is uh, we will use on here right a day is given there or more specifically they have given a date 25th so that day is 25th December. For that reason, his birthday is on, we will use. Whereas, uh, there should be lot of progress dash the next century. Now, you see students, just remember in this way, next century, longer period of time. Okay, so there should be lot of progress uh, in, 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 in the next century. As far as time, time, preposition of time is concerned, for longer period we use uh, in. Whereas, next one you see, where will you be? Dash New Year's Day. They have mentioned a specific day. Day or date. In that case, where will you be? On, on, on New Year's Day. Right. Next, Kiran went to his office dash lunchtime. Now you see, 
here we should use lunch time is specific time this is okay so that is specifically lunch time we should use at here at okay at lunch time at midnight at the uh, sunset or at the sunrise we have to use in these cases at okay so next when the specific time is there next one the shop closes ah, now you see here the shop closes uh, dash midnight specific time is mentioned there right midnight is specific time so for that reason the shop closes uh, at midnight we should not use the shop closes uh, on midnight that is wrong right on is used for days or dates uh, a moderate specific that is all right uh, so the shop closes at midnight at midnight is the right one hope you must have understood the usage of this one all right when to use at on and in here at on in three examples i have taken consecutively so here specifically 10 o'clock i meet you at 10 o'clock next on my birthday is on 25th december right because day or date is given now here next century next century means longer period of time for that reason I use in. So here also the specific day is given. For that reason I have used on here. Specific time, midnight, lunch time I should use at. Hope you got the general idea of uh, prepositions of time particularly at, in, on. Now we will move on to the confusion. Where generally the students are confused. Let's take the next sentence and try to fill up uh, uh, the or uh, try to suggest the right preposition there. Now observe these two examples students. Observe these two examples and try to fill with uh, a suitable preposition that too in, on and uh, at. Okay. Now let's see. Here I will meet you tomorrow dash the morning. First sentence. Next one I will meet you dash the Monday morning. See students very clearly here I will meet you tomorrow is it in the morning or at the morning or on the morning? Simple students, I cannot use at here because uh, they are not given a specific time for that one. Rule out. I cannot use uh, on the morning here because that is not the proper usage. Alright, uh, so here, see, we will use, uh, I will meet you tomorrow in the morning. In the morning. In. Why is that in the morning? Why it cannot be on the morning? Simple one. In the morning means morning is longer period of time. I don't know when in the morning. I don't know when in the morning. Nothing is given specifically or a little more specifically also. They are not given. Simply, I will meet you tomorrow. That's the morning. Morning is longer period of time. For that reason, I use the preposition in the morning. Means sometime in the morning. Not a specific timing. In the evening, in the morning, that is the usage here. Whereas, uh, the second one you see, I will meet you, dash the Monday morning. Here, they are talking about a specific day, that is Monday. Alright, so, I will meet you on the Monday morning. Remember this. I will meet you on the Monday. Right? Whether it is morning or evening or at midnight, that doesn't matter for me. Because this Monday is uh, dominating this time. Alright? So here, I will meet you on the Monday. I will meet you on Monday. That's enough. Whether it is morning or evening, as I told you, that doesn't matter. So for that reason, I will meet you on the Monday morning. On the Monday evening, whatever it may be. Right? But uh, here, I will meet you tomorrow in the morning because there is no specific timing or there is no specific date or there is no specific day mentioned there. For that reason it is I will meet you tomorrow in the morning. So here this morning is dominating tomorrow. Here Monday is dominating morning. That is the reason why here it is in and this is on. Hope you got the idea, right? Just observe the next example or before going for this example. Uh, why can't we construct one sentence here? By yourself you construct this one. You have to use these words only. And all the three prepositions in, at, on, all the three things should be used. Now, use the same sense. Okay, same word should be used more or less. 
and you have to use in at on try it pause the video and try this one we can frame the sentence like this i will meet you at i will meet you at 9 o'clock over oh, right i will meet you at 9 o'clock then i have to use in and on also i will meet you at 9 o'clock in the morning on next monday so this is the way simple one i will meet you at 9 o'clock specific timing right i will meet you meet you at 9 o'clock in the morning on next monday we can use all the three together i hope you must have observed this one and must have understood the usage of in at on finally i am telling you it is more specific timing on is for dates and days and in should be used in general sense for long period of time as far well as time the prepositions of time is concerned and prepositions of place is concerned also you can use in and at that is a that is the different case when we go for place or position we will discuss that one again and now we will go for some specific things where we can omit the prepositions how to omit the preposition just observe the other example let's observe these examples students very important concept now see here they have given four examples you observe here just read the sentences read out what is that i went to mumbai last december next one nivedita will come back to india next monday i visit my uncle's office every diwali next i will call nivedita this evening what you have observed here just observe this one one more time here we have not used prepositions here see what is that i went to mumbai last december i should not we should not say i went to mumbai in last december wrong in last december is wrong you should not use in here the preposition should not be used got the idea in should not be used it should be omitted here i went to mumbai last december it is not in last december got the idea right so when you have used when you are using the words last make a note of this one just take a notebook make a note of that when you are using last then next every this when you use these words in a sentence there is no need to use any preposition you can omit the preposition that is the correct usage here i went to mumbai last december as i told you just now it should not be in last december got the idea similarly nivedita will come back to india next monday this is not on next monday on next monday this is wrong usage generally a specific day or date of the week generally we use the preposition on we have learned that one but when the word next is used you should not use on next monday that should be omitted remember this one make a note of this she will come back to india uh, next monday is enough no need to use on similarly i visit my uncle's office every diwali you should not use any preposition here you should not use i visit uh, my uncle's office on every diwali that is wrong on every diwali day that is wrong simply you should omit the preposition here i visit my uncle's office every diwali that's enough all right even here also before this this also what is that we will call nivedita this evening that's all this is not uh, we will call uh, nivedita in this evening is wrong in this evening at this place of time this is wrong at this place it is wrong you should not use any preposition simply that is we will call nivedita this evening got the idea in the evening in the morning in the afternoon that is different right in the other context we have to use in before evening morning or uh, like any other case whatever it may be in the evening in the morning right uh, then in the afternoon that's okay but you have to use at night we should not use in before night i'll, I'll just tell you after this one but uh, remember students make a note of these words last next then every this when you use these words in any sentence there is no need to use any preposition before that one 
hope you must have understood the usage of that one basically what is that at in and on let us take some more examples so that all the points will be covered then we will move on to other uh, prepositions of time now just observe these examples students seven examples i have given you right now you will have more clarity on how to use uh, prepositions of time particularly in at and on we are discussing only these three in at and on just answer this one the first sentence i will be there dash 30 minutes i will meet you dash 5 pm dash monday the party starts dash midnight she doesn't like driving dash night dash the moment see a sentence can start with a preposition also a sentence can end with preposition also now the meeting will uh, finish finish this is finish finish dash 430 I will be there dash no now you have the basics enough basics on using prepositions of time particularly in on and at now pause the video and try to fill it up as quick as possible with the in on and at what is the suitable preposition for the sentences here all right take the first one students what is that I will be there Dash 30 minutes without any doubt you should say I will be there in 30 minutes in 30 minutes what is the concept of in when the preposition in should be used when they have given period of time at the beginning of the class when I taught you when to use the preposition in I have given you clearly longer period of time I specifically I specified on that one longer period of time why I have given you in that way the beginners should understand that one first of all Longer period of time means it cannot be decades or centuries in that way, right? For a period of time, even for 30 minutes, you can use in. For example, here 2 minutes are there, you should use in also. What is that? I will be there in 2 minutes. That is a perfect usage of a preposition in there, okay? Next, means period of time. In period of time, you have to use in. Whereas the next one you see, I will meet you dash 5 p.m dash monday now you tell me quickly without any doubt you can say this is specific time they have given specific time here right that is clock time so clearly i will meet you dash 5 pm means at 5 pm it should be used for specific timing there the clock time you have to use at at a particular uh, like time in a day also we have to use at when to use that one? At noon. Particular time that is, right? At noon. At midnight. At lunch time. At bedtime. Got the clarity? Right? I'll tell you, uh, like, uh, when you are using at or in, as far as the timings in a day are concerned, how to use specific time is there. You have to use at, as I told you, at noon, at midnight, at bedtime, at lunch time, you have to use in this way, because specific time is there. Now, I will meet you at 5 p.m., then dash Monday. Is it in Monday, on Monday, or at Monday? Without any doubt, you can say, I will meet you at 5 p.m. on Monday. Simple. Because uh, when we are using days of the week, our dates we have to use on. I told you that rule also. Alright. So, all three prepositions are used here in, at and uh, on. Okay. Next, go for the uh, third one here. The party starts uh, dash midnight. I told you. In, in a, during a day, midnight is a specific time. For that reason, we use uh, the party starts uh, at midnight. There is no doubt about this one. Alright, next one. She doesn't like driving dash night. Now you see, here, when you are using night, uh, to be very careful students, very, very important point I am going to discuss. Here, she doesn't like driving, is it in night or on night or at night just go for this one there is an exception for this one always remember we have to use at night remember all right so she doesn't like driving at night it is not in night or on night remember in a day we must say suppose evening is there evening morning Afternoon, I'm writing after, right? Evening, morning, afternoon, night. 
which preposition should be used always remember students when you are talking about evening we have to use in 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 the evening remember whereas morning also in 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 the morning now in in the afternoon don't forget the articles also when we go for articles uh, uh, chapter or uh, that concept uh, i'll make you clear why we have to use that the here in the evening in the morning in the afternoon but whereas it comes to night uh, you should not say in night uh, we must say at night remember this one at night Got the idea, right? So suppose this is there. She doesn't like driving in the evening. That's okay. She doesn't like driving in the afternoon, in the morning. That's okay. But when it is night, it must be prefixed with preposition at only. Got the idea, right? The next one you see. Dash the moment she is working on a project. Now you see here. Dash the moment a specific time they have mentioned, right? In this case also, we have to use at, remember. Okay, it is not in the moment. It is not on the moment. Now, it should be at the moment she is working on a project. So, specific, specifically they have mentioned this one. At the moment, at that time, particularly they have given. For that reason, you have to use at. Next one you see, the meeting will finish. Now, it's very simple. The meeting will finish at 4.30. Alright. The other time preposition is there. Even by can be used here. The meeting will finish by 4.30. I'll tell you later. Right. We, here we are discussing only in, at and on only. So you uh, please be confined to these three prepositions only. What is the difference between at and by also? When we discuss by, I'll tell you. Next one. I will be there. I will be there. Ah, now you tell me. I will be there. Dash no. It is not in known or unknown. It should be, I will be there at noon. At noon. Why I have used this at here? The reason is simple. Noon, specific timing is there. 12 o'clock, generally in the morning, 12 o'clock we use noon, noon, noon. Right? So here, that is, I will be there at noon. I will be there at dusk. I will be there at dawn. So specific timing is there. For that reason, we use this one as a, I will be there at noon. Suppose it is afternoon. I will be there in the afternoon. So afternoon, after 12 o'clock. I don't know the specific timing. In that case, I will use a, I will be there in the afternoon, not a, at the afternoon. We have to use in the afternoon, after noon after noon noon is 12 o'clock generally we consider after 12 o'clock i don't know the timing for that reason i can use i'll be there in the afternoon in the morning in the evening but at night at noon at dusk at dawn at bedtime at lunch time hope you must have got the idea this is how we need to use the uh, prepositions, particularly prepositions of uh, time. Let's take two, three examples and uh, finish off this one using in, at and uh, on. In the next session, I'm going to take the remaining parts of uh, time prepositions. See students, we will take, I will take all the classes very comprehensively so that what happens, you will understand the concept from the basic level because in competitive exams, the prepositions and that means questions based on prepositions they may give everywhere i cannot name the chapter for example error detection prepositions can be used right sentence correction then sentence improvement and even reading comprehension then close test everywhere everywhere prepositions are useful that is the reason why i'm focusing more on this one now let's take as i told you uh, two three more it's two or three examples now Let's finish off with these examples and uh, after these examples, I'll give you another very important thing. What is the difference between in time and uh, on time? Many people get confused between this in time and uh, on time. I'll explain you that. But before that, this is your job. You have to finish off all these things. You have to like uh, fill up these blanks with the suitable preposition there. See the first one. Nivedita is busy dash present. Without much thinking, we must say at present. Why at present? 
because specific time is there at present at this moment okay next here i finish my coaching dash end of december a little confusion right remember students when i finish my coaching end of december means here among this in on and at you have to use at here why at only because that is the specific timing at the end of december or at end of december we have to use in that way okay next third one you see the boy sleeps dash the afternoon again good one right here the boy sleeps in 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 the afternoon remember in the morning right in the evening at the night okay so here the boy sleeps in the afternoon because it is period of time next i will come to your place dash 5 minutes just now we have discussed right i will come to your place in 5 minutes in 5 minutes okay next i was born 1973 the period the time period is there in 1973 okay i was born on 25th december for example right so now here it is in 1973 next what are you doing dash the weekend very important thing students this one here you see actually english is not our native language all right so that is foreign language for us generally we follow in india we follow the british english now here for this one the prepositions what are you doing on the weekend or at the weekend both are accepted both are accepted in india we use british english so in britain they use at at right at the weekend they won't say on the weekend so Americans used in US they use uh, generally on weekends whereas uh, British English that is at the weekend since we follow British English uh, we take it as at even on also not a bad word not bad uh, preposition at in this place next the next one is uh, uh, it happened dash 14th century it happened in 14th century because that is longer period of time to use this when we are uh, like uh, talking about centuries right uh, so weeks months time in this case we go for in here all right uh, so in 14th century at the same time this also uh, where is that one in five minutes here it is in five minutes we can use in two minutes also all right don't say on two minutes or at two minutes so in two minutes in 14th century this is accepted I hope you must have understood the concept of a preposition. That too, we have focused in this class on a preposition of a time. Even in that preposition of a time also, we have taken only three prepositions that is in, on and at. You should be perfect with this one students. In the next session, we will, use, we will go for other prepositions, prepositions of time, we will take other. But before closing this one, as I told you, I will give you the difference between on time and in time. Most of the students are getting confused here. We got many mails also. See, on time and in time, you have to use it this way. The meaning of on time, right? On time means that should be a specific timing which is supposed to happen, right? Which is scheduled to be happening, which, which is scheduled to happen. We must use that one as on time. For example, a flight is scheduled at 10.30 in the morning. Okay? And the flight is scheduled at 10.30 in the morning and it is leaving at 10.30 in the morning. We must say the flight is leaving on time. It is leaving on time. The class is scheduled at 9.30 in the morning, right? Then I have started the class at 9.30 only. Means what does it mean? The class started on time. So, so at a specific time, right? Which is scheduled, already scheduled and it happened at that time only. We must say that one on time. So, the class is scheduled at 9.30. You should be on time. An announcement to the students. 
the class is scheduled at 9 30 you should be on time means what does it mean not earlier not after that one you should be present in the class at 9 30 means what does it mean not later than this one you should be on time what do you mean by in time see students in time means uh, in time in time means uh, something is scheduled for example 9 30 the class is scheduled you got struck up in, a, a, in the traffic. Somehow you managed to come. You managed to come by 9.30. The last moment you have come to the class. Means if it is a little delayed also, your class doors would have been closed for you. Means something happened at the last moment. Right? It is already delayed. But it happened at the last moment. So what does it mean? So how to express that one? The class was scheduled at 9.30. I got struck up in the traffic. Somehow I'm, I managed to reach the class in time. Means just, just in time I have reached. In that case we have, we have to use in time. For example, suppose let's take in this way. Uh, an accident took place on the road. Alright. The, the person has been rushed to the hospital. The person got to the hospital in time. What do you mean by that one? The person got to the hospital in time means uh, if there is a little delay, he would have died. What the idea? So, in time means, uh, so we brought him to the hospital in time. If it is a little delay or delay also, the patient would have been died. You got the idea? So, this is the difference between on time and uh, in time. On time means the scheduled time, right? In time means uh, at the last moment. Remember this one. Alright, with the simple one, we will close this session and in the next session, I am going to take the remaining part of the prepositions. Thank you very much students.